Hi, this is Jack. Welcome to the Pitbull Bible Online APBT database. Today what we're going to do is discuss entering in breedings as opposed to entering in dogs. Now, I know a lot of the online databases allow you just to enter in dogs and you there is no way to distinguish a breeding from a dog and that's because these are old archaic systems and just not in the same league as the one that we've put together and I'm going to explain why. It's very important to understand this because if you really care about your breedings as a breeder or if you care about the dogs that you're buying as a customer, being able to account for pups in the best way possible is critical. First of all, all of our dogs and breedings are entered here, so we're going to click the Pedigrees tab and get into the Pedigrees database. Now this is for entering in Bulldogs, the actual dogs. There's a whole drop-down menu for entering in dogs. There's a whole drop-down menu for entering breedings breeders as well as owners. Since we're talking about breedings, we're going to go ahead and go into here. Now if you're entering in a breeding, you're going to click add breeding and you get a blank slate, but I'm going to show you a breeding that I've already entered to kind of expedite the process. So let me search for it. I'm going to look for a screamer. Okay. And these are breedings I've entered. Okay, these are the breedings with screamer that I've put in so far. This one didn't take and I'm going to look at this one with poncho. Okay, the Poncho Screamer breeding is probably the highest percentage breeding I've ever made, so I'd like to favor this one. All of these are the pups that came from the breeding. Okay, if I want to look at the pups, wow, I can see each pup. Just click on the little icon, and I can see how each of the pups turned out from my breeding. That's just a cool little feature, but I want to explain some important foundational elements that make this whole system just badass compared to everybody else's. To begin with, I've only got two pictures here, but I can put in an unlimited number of pictures. Okay, this is dated. Let's see, 3799. Okay, these pups were born on 38, so that was like the day before she dropped. Okay, I, t I have a picture of the tie, I have a picture of the day before she dropped. And now I've got all the pups that were entered. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pups. She actually had eight pups, one died. Okay, so let me explain how this works and why it works this way. Um, this is the breeding database. This is holding the breeding of Poncho to Screamer. Each puppy is not entered in the breeding database at all. It's entered in the dog database. I have separately entered in Mystery, Jezebel, Duke Nukem, Laguna, Athena, Unreal, Little Meanie. All of these were entered into the dog database. And then what I do is I collect, I select male, and then I'll put in the pup name. I've already entered them, so they won't show up. But let's say they weren't in here. As I type a pup, all the puppies from this breeding will drop down, and I can and I can plug them in here. And now this is a, re a record for me as a breeder of the breeding, the date of the breeding, the date the pups were born, and then each pup that came from this breeding. No one can come around five years later and say, oh yeah, I got a Poncho Screamer pup. If it's not here, they don't have it. Hold on. Sorry about that. That was my phone. Anyway, when you enter a breeding, you're going to go here to add breeding and what it's going to do is look like the same thing as the edit field so I'll click edit here. When I entered this breeding I put in myself as the breeder obviously Poncho as the dog, dam, etc. Now when you type these in you'll see you'll get a, a drop down menu and it was Poncho that was the sire so I selected Poncho. The same is true with the dam, the same is true with the breeder you must enter all these things in first before you can enter the breeding. Now importantly we have a breeding date and if your litter has not dropped it will automatically pop out a 63 day later litter date. If that winds up being true when the litter actually hits the ground leave it as it is. If it's a little early or a little late you can come back here at the edit section edit the breeding to the correct date. You can also select uh, how the litter was created. Was it artificial insemination, natural breeding, frozen semen? This happened to be a natural breeding. Now you save and of course this is the breeding. You can enter an unlimited number of photos from here. You click browse, enter in all the, uh, you know, 
corresponding pictures that the tie I entered this was uh, screamer I think one day before she dropped etc unlimited number of photographs so that when this whole thing is done properly you've entered the breeding in right you've gone into the dog database and entered each pup right and then you've come here now this is an important thing too you hook these pups by virtue of the breeding poncho screamer they're going to be entered in the dog database as poncho screamer but importantly also you must have a litter date their birth dates each dog's birthday has to be in here and the reason is suppose I did a repeat breeding how do I distinguish the first breeding from the second breeding except by birth date so suppose you did two breedings instead of lumping in a gazillion puppies under one breeding since that's not the truth what you're going to do is make sure your breeding has a litter date each pup has a birth date and that way you can hook up the appropriate pups to each breeding on a repeat breeding and uh, categorize it that way and I've got a couple of breedings in here that are duplicate breedings. so when all is said and done this gives you more information than any other database in the world it gives you more information than the ADBA the ADBA doesn't show you the pictures of all the litter mates the ADBA doesn't show you pictures of the pups you get a, a piece of paper so-and-so bred to so-and-so well you know if you're the customer what does that mean to you if you're a breeder suppose some guy sends in registration forges your name and says he's got an extra pup off the breeding the ADBA has no accountability they get duped all the time you as the owner of this breeding that can't happen it can't happen why because you plug this in nobody can edit this except you and me the administrator and I'm not gonna mess with it you add what pups are in here somebody comes down the line and says they got a Duke uh, uh, poncho screamer pup I tell them they're full of it it has to be this way so really from the owner and breeder standpoint this is the best system there is better than the ADBA from the customer standpoint you get to check out all the dogs in the litter and again that implies if the breeder is conscientious enough to put all this stuff in here you get to see a genetic breakdown and this genetic breakdown here corresponds to the level and depth you go in the pedigree if I click 13 generations this is going to be dramatically different because our dogs back here and the further generations that are not accounted for this is just for the first four generations so come on over try this out you know you can check out each pup in here you can see the videos of the dogs if they each have a video it's the best system there is period so thanks for watching